When you think of Borderlands characters, the first thing your mind goes to is probably funny, cool, or more often than not, insane. You just generally don't associate smart characters with Borderlands because it has a more fun time with making everyone be either stupid or crazy. But there are some genuinely smart characters that exist in the franchise. So I decided to give you a handful of characters that I thought could be classified as smart. Now the term smart can be applied in many different ways. Roland can be considered smart for his knowledge and ability to form and subsequently lead a makeshift army. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be sticking to a more conventional definition. Also, this list isn't in any order. There's really no need for that. Now, Tannis, I would say, is the smartest character in the entire franchise from a traditional sense. She's the only one we're aware of who has an actual doctorate degree. And while that may not be the most impressive bar to place on someone in a universe full of killer robots and space magic and stuff, it goes to show where her base intelligence stems from. Yeah, she may have gone insane during her time on Pandora, but as her card states in Borderlands 2, she's insanely smart. Her story does have various retcons in them, such as her interest in the Iridian alien technology. In the original game, it was made out to sound like she was a woman of science, that the ruins and myths about Iridians were all made up and she didn't believe in them. But in Borderlands 3, it was changed to her always believing in the tales of the Iridians and vault hunting because she was a fan of the first vault hunter and wanted to be like him. To be honest, I like the first version of her better. It makes more sense to me when she inevitably loses her mind and becomes insane from living on Pandora. Her sanity feels more questioned as the legends she thought were fake were now becoming real in front of her very eyes. Was she believing it because she was insane now, or was she believing it because she was actually smart enough to understand and decipher it? It doesn't matter because she did go insane. But that incredibly smart scientist part of her never left. She continued researching, she continued to uncover and learn more, deciphering an alien language and history. She's both a scientist and an archaeologist. Before she knew it, she became the resident expert in all things alien. People turn to her because she's smart enough to do it. She'll dissect, decipher, study, test, and take the time needed to make an educated, informed decision. Everyone else just shoots their shot in the dark or punches the unknown. But Tannis is one of the few people to actually think. Now, I think it's slightly unfair to include an entire race of people in this, especially considering everyone else in this is human. Aliens in most form of fiction tend to be vastly more advanced than those who make up the bulk of the cast. But considering there aren't many aliens in Borderlands, I thought it was fine just this once. I mean, they invented the vaults and impressively enough made some of the vault monsters as well as the guardians that protect it. It's impressive what they've accomplished. I mean, they built an entire planet to function as a cage. But what really interests me is that there had to have been at least one main planner who spearheaded these inventions. Everything kind of gets paired up as the entire race did everything. They all got the idea and they all collectively worked to make it come to life. But if you think about it, there had to be some kind of grand architect amongst the Iridians who came up with at least some of these blueprints. We know they're not a hive mind, some Iridians stood against their own kind when trying to stop the destroyer. So like any hierarchy, the bulk must have been made up by mostly workers, while there was someone responsible for the design of everything to begin with. So if that's true, then they deserve credit for being the intelligent one and the one who deserves to be on this list. But for now, they get lumped in as the Iridians for inventing the vaults, vault monsters, and guardians. For being the franchise's most popular villain, Handsome Jack rightfully deserves his spot there. Not only is he diametrically opposed to the Vault Hunter believing himself to be the hero, but he's a real threat due to how smart he actually is. While he may have started out working at Hyperion as a lowly programmer, his capabilities far surpassed what he was getting paid to do. One of his earliest strokes of genius came when Angel accidentally killed her mother. Suffering from sorrow and grief at the time, Jack placed enough blame on his daughter's shoulders to warrant containing her within a facility. And thus, Control Core Angel was made, or at least a prototype of it at the time as he lacked many resources. 
But regardless, he built a facility which contained Angel and her powers and hooked her up to the Echo Net to get a leg up on his fellow competitors. And this leads into something that makes him even more dangerous than just his technological knowledge, and that's his ability to work towards a future that he wants. Jack rarely ever allows a situation to happen to him. He's always actively working towards some future goal. He has Angel lead the Vault Hunters to get the Destroyer. He hires some Vault Hunters to help him find the Vault on the Moon. He was one of the first people to recognize the potential Iridium had and saw the opportunity and thus began experimenting with it, mainly on people. And even Hyperion began to see robots as more of a hassle than they were worth. But it was Jack who really fought for and showed how useful they could be. The loader bots and constructors were invented and used to reimagine a new age of Hyperion. Granted, that helped because he lost his mind, killed the CEO, and took over the company for himself. So, with a lot of money and resources, he was able to do that. But even by doing that, he rarely faced any criticism by others in the company because he marketed himself. After becoming Handsome Jack, he spread propaganda everywhere, hailing himself as a hero. Providing the best guns in the universe, he sold himself to the people and many bought into it. Employees wanted to follow in his made-up path to CEO, men wanted to be him, women wanted to be with him. His intelligence goes beyond just inventing and having a hand in making many of the staple robotics Hyperion is known for, but his ability to deceive and recognize potential before anyone else and work towards an active future is what made him as dangerously intelligent as he is. Talk about someone you wouldn't expect to be on the smartest characters list, but to be honest, he deserves to be here. When it comes to general smarts, yeah, he's pretty simple, dumb, downright stupid. But when it comes to mechanics, he's a true savant. Say what you want about him, but the Ketcherite business was his. He brought that whole thing to Pandora. The Outrunners, the cars, they were all his doing. He worked on them and made it something that anyone could use. He turned his talent into a business, which is an impressive thing to do in and of itself. And when he became part of the Crimson Raiders, he helped them get Sanctuary up into the sky, which no one else around would have been able to do. He knows cars better than anyone else in the franchise. You could say that every bit of his intelligence and effort went into this one skill of his, and that's what's made him iconic. He had the business prowess to constantly try expanding his business like his mother did, and similarly, he was always promoting it. He might not be traditionally smart, but you're not going to find someone who knew cars better than him. A truly dangerous woman is one who's got both beauty and brains, and Moxie has got it all. I think Moxie's often overlooked for how smart her character actually is. Her facade of being a bartender works quite well. It's a job she does, yes, but her reason for it isn't just for the tips. She's always got her ear open, feeding drinks to patrons who like to get chatty when tipsy. She's an informant who runs a vast business, mostly made up of bars, but she has dipped her toe into other ventures as well. The conception for the handsome jackpot casino was her idea and schematics before Jack stole it and made it himself. And at the end of that DLC, she takes control of it and now runs that casino. She also ran her own coliseum, where she served as its hostess and announcer. Similarly, during Torg's campaign of Carnage, Moxie dips her toe into becoming a sponsor for the Vault Hunter. And at the end of the DLC, she has Torg give her the arena so she doesn't tell his stockholders about his illegal off-world deathmatch. Moxie knows how to run a business, and not just one at that. Bars, casinos, coliseums, her portfolio is large and only continues to grow. Plus, and I haven't even mentioned this, she comes from the Hodunk clan, meaning she is also an incredibly talented mechanic. She's the one who taught Scooter and Ellie everything they know. She might not be as good as either one of them are in modern day, as she split her talent among separate professions, but she's still better than 99% of people. She might have a pretty face, but that pretty face is to get you to think she's not as smart as she actually is. I gave Moxie everything when we were married. You know she's why I'm fat, right? She said, Marcus, make your enemies underestimate you. If you're ruthless, look fat. If you're smart, look sexy. Great girl. For being an at the time 18 year old girl during Borderlands 2, Gage, despite her young age, has shown engineering talent far beyond her years. When her school was holding a science fair, her first instinct was to create an anti-bullying robot. 
and like it was nothing got a floating prototype up and running. She understands Digistruct technology and equipped it with claws and a laser. Now, this prototype did wind up killing one of her classmates by accident, so you could say that's a sign of not being a great engineer. But you know what? She made the most out of it. Of course, this robot would go on to be Death Trap, which has even still to this day been a very strong and formidable ally who is tough to bring down. On top of that, Gage cut off her own arm and replaced it with a robotic one which A was not only stronger, but B she also outfitted with programming so she could quick summon her DT unit. And while most of Gage's accomplishments can be boiled down to this one single creation, what's still impressive about it is how her earlier prototypes of it were stolen and repurposed to create the public service bots. These are the robots you can find mass-produced by Maliwan, which all hold a variety of differing jobs. They are police bots, firefighter bots, janitor bots, and so on. They can and do get hostile, barely managing to accomplish what the later iteration Gage designed it for, but the fact that a prototype from a high school girl could still be utilized to such an extent and high effectiveness goes to show that Gage's inventions, while they are few and far between, are more so quality instead of quantity. Well, there you go. Those were just some of the smartest characters that exist in the Borderlands games that we know so far. There were definitely a few notable mentions that could have made it onto this list. Janie is kind of a rocket scientist. She at least knows how to build one. But anyway, if there are any other characters you think deserve to be on here, then let me know in the comments below with an explanation as to why. I'm not saying these were the only smart characters, but just a handful I thought were worthy of being mentioned. But for now, that does it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.